So you um again, I appreciate everyone for tuning in and being on with us. I can tell you this. It is so important and ex extremely vital. And that's why I'm going to keep pushing and pushing to make sure that we minister to the needs uh, of men in church. Um, it, it's, it's very, unfortunately, it's very normal to have more women than men in church. But we want to just make sure that as a ministry, that we continue to pour into you all. It's important that we do have our own sessions our own opportunities to get together as brothers to create a bond and fellowship, but iron sharpens iron. So I do appreciate we have some of our college brothers. We have some of our brothers from the school and some of the brothers from the church. And again, I am fully aware of how hectic your schedule is, but I think for us to be the kind of men that God is calling for, we have to continue to stay connected to God, stay connected to our word. And I, I'm very strategic on who I bring in to speak to us because I understand the importance of your time and my time. And it's always so anytime I have an opportunity to bring a, a brother in to talk with you all, to minister to you all on the natural and the spiritual so we can continue to grow and be the men that God wants us to be, we want to fully, fully take that opportunity. So I do want to appreciate every single brother that's on here. We thank you for this time and opportunity for the locker room men's Bible study. So uh, this is actually Elder Josh Shem's uh, second time presenting to us. Um, awesome brother, the elder at, um, here we go. And I'm going to allow him to tell you a little bit more about himself, but he's, he's an elder in the Church of God in Christ. He's an assistant principal um he is is a, a newlywed congratulations um but he's just an awesome brother awesome brother major accomplishments but the main thing is that he loves the lord and so again i'm going to allow him to tell you as much about himself as possible but i i don't want to belabor the time i want to present introduce to some present to others elder Josh Sims. My brother, you have the floor. You can take it away. Good afternoon. I, I, I think I have three things that, that I probably need to say before I get started. Uh, I'm, I'm following the leading of your pastor. And so uh, even now, even though I'm the presenter, I'm subject to him. So I will tell you a little bit about myself in just a second. Uh, but I will tell you all this, that you have to know that I love your pastor because this is spring break for me. Me wow. meaning that meaning that this is uh this is my free time. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> supposed to be with any students. I'm not supposed to be with anybody. So this is free time. This is spring break for me. Wow. But he said Tuesday on, on March 22nd, I said, you know what? Hey, I'm I'm gonna do it and, and that's it. Uh so you know I, I love your that. pastor. That, that the next thing I want to say is I know I saw Anthony Morris come on here and if he logged on, I just need to make sure he understands that this is the only team in Pennsylvania. I need him to understand that. Because if anybody know him, he's a Philadelphia Eagles fan. And so I just need him to understand that this is the only team in Pennsylvania. So he'll, he'll get that one later on as well. And I'm glad this is recorded so he can always replay that. Uh, the next thing is that, uh, yes, I, I am a principal. Yes, I, I am a newlywed. I'm actually um, a, an assistant principal of discipline at Huntington High School. And so if anybody uh, have been watching the news, you all know that that young man that got killed uh, recently, uh, the young basketball player, he was one of our students just at school that morning and then turned around and went home to go get a haircut uh, for the basketball game because they were in the playoffs and got killed from senseless violence. And so I, I said that uh, because really it matters not really anything else about me. It, it matters about what I am doing and what I, what I try to do. And that is, you know, minister to not just the, uh, uh, the older generation, but minister definitely to the younger generation, to, to those men. He was a young man, you know, and I saw it as two young men were lost, the one that killed him and the one that got killed. And so um, it reminded me of, of just how quickly we take life for granted and how fast we lose men. I, I think I read one statistic that, that said that 80% of murders had happened and it was all 80% of black men. 
you know, and so that that's a lot. You hardly ever hear about young ladies going out shooting each other. You know, and so it, it, it's the men that's grabbing the guns and it's the young men that's, that's doing the senseless acts. And so, like I said, when your pastor said, hey, you know, do this, man, listen, any chance I get now, I will do it because, you know, if they ask you back a second time, you must have did all right the first time. Uh, so without any further ado, I, I, I sent this topic to your pastor and uh, <clears throat> the, the subject is why not me? with a hyphen, unlocking your true potential. And, and so I feel like that there are a lot of things that happen to us. We're, we're already, uh, so to speak, born with a, with, a, with a tough challenge ahead. You know, uh, just being a man, you're expected to be the strongest, just being a man, you're expected not to cry, not to have emotions. You know, just being a man, there's a stereotype and there's a stigma placed on you immediately. And so you already have so much on you that you don't really get a chance to just sit back and figure out who you are, what you're supposed to do, and what potential you have on the inside of you. And so that's really what we're going to look at today, just, just unlocking your true potential and, and why not me? Anybody's ever thought about anything or had any type of dream or, or really self-doubt? You know, you have to ask yourself, why, why not me? Why, why can't it be? You know, I was talking to my wife and, and we were looking at, you know, some land possibly for building a house. And you know, I was like, well, why, why not us? Why, why can't we build a house? Who says we can't build the house that we want to build? You know, who says we can't live where we want to live? Who says we can't stay in this neighborhood? Who says we can't have this job? Who says, you know, it, it's, it's about understanding your purpose and understanding the potential. So, it will be somewhat interactive. I'll try not to talk as much, but there's a lot, there's some things that I really want to say as a point I want to get across. Um, but just for interactive purposes, just in the beginning, can anybody tell me what is potential? You can chime in really quickly and say what you feel like potential is, or you can type it in the chat if you're at your computer. What is your definition of potential? I know anybody volunteer for the prayer, so hey. I would say your, what potential is. Come on. Your ability to be great at something. Okay. Your ability to be great at something. I like that. Anybody else? Definition of potential. Come on, somebody give me one more. One more. Your definition of potential. What uh, I, I would say. You can hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, um, like, ability that you have yet to unlock within yourself, like potential. I like that. Uh, Brother Conley, Brother Blake said, what I strive to achieve eventually over time. I like that. Okay, so that's potential. If we look at the definition of potential, um, by dictionary standards, it says potential is latent, existing but not yet developed or manifest. It's hidden or concealed qualities or abilities that may be developed and lead to future success or usefulness, all right? Or another definition of potential is showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. So we all understand that potential is not the current it is what's going to happen in the future. It's what we have now that can be developed into the future sense. So the word potential leaves something, like my father always say, leaves something to be desired. You have potential, but it leaves something to be desired. And so when we talk about unlocking your full potential, we understand that in our state of mind is that we have not peaked yet or so to speak, we have not reached our full capacity of which we can go no higher. So in other words, we still have all this potential. And if we did not have any more potential, that means we've reached the level that we should have reached or we've already reached our full capacity. So for this thought process, I want you to think of a dam, all right? And so 
you think of a dam and everybody should know basically how a dam works. And the dam is basically built to hold back a certain amount of water, okay? And I did have some videos of some dams, but I'm not gonna play that right now, but it says we should, we know how a dam works. And we've heard in school, we possibly seen one in action. And so when we think about a dam, there's an amount of water that comes up to the dam. And as long as the dam holds, you know, the water stays there and it stays where it's supposed to go. But what happens when there is a flash flood? When there's a flash flood and the water comes through and all of a sudden it starts to, you have the dam here and you have the water and all of a sudden the water is at this level and then it starts to go higher and higher and higher. And all of a sudden the dam can't hold it anymore because the water is higher and it over flows. A dam that is able to hold our water has not reached its full capacity. Understand that a dam that is still able to work and able to hold back the water hasn't reached its full capacity yet, okay? So by that definition alone, excuse me, <clears throat> there's still potential there, right? And until the dam is pressed, no one will really know the dam's potential. And you got to think about that really quickly. Until the dam has been pressured, until it has been, been, been almost reached to capacity, until it has been tested, nobody will know the dam's full potential. So think about that in our, in our setting. We ever wonder why we go through some things? Or we ever wonder why everything seems so tough? Or we ever wonder why I came from this part of the neighborhood and somebody else came from this part of the neighborhood and it seems like their life was a little bit easier and mine seemed like a little bit tougher. Until that dam gets pressed, the full potential cannot be recognized. All right? So fast forward then. I ask you a question. Do you know your full potential? Have you ever been pressed or buckled under pressure? Have you reached your full capacity? And at this point now, do you feel like your dam is about to break? These are some real self-reflective questions you have to ask yourself. Because you might be on the job and I'm just tired of it. I, I don't know where else to go, but I, I feel like there's something else that I'm supposed to be doing, but I, I don't know which direction to go. I, I feel like I'm, I'm in school. I can tell you right now, look, I went to school, to college. I changed my major three times until I figured out the right major that, that, that I wanted to, to get into. And it's crazy that I did that because as I went into, uh, I, went into I went into pharmacy, then I went into toxicology, then I went into something else, and then I went to psychology. And the psychology book, when a psychology teacher gave it to me the first time, I looked at the book and it was a little wooden puzzle on the front of the book. What had happened to be the exact same wooden puzzle that I used to play with as a little kid. But it took me three times to get to that level, you know? And so, I, but I always had that desire. I'm in pharmacy, pre-pharmacy, like, man, this is not what I really want to do. Let me switch to toxicology. This is not what I really want to do. I always had that longing that that potential tells you that what you're doing is not enough and there is more for you. You have to seize it and you have to take that step out on faith. So I ask those questions for a reason because I want us to see what the Bible says about potential. Ephesians 3 and 20, if I have my Bible scholars that are grabbing their Bible and taking their notes and like that, Ephesians 3 and 20, it says that now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now think about that. You're like, well, how is this saying potential? You can't get it twisted. God can do things without us. We understand it. He can do things without us. But in order for his word to be fulfilled, he chooses to work through us, i.e. the potential, okay? Zechariah 4 and 6 says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto the Ruvel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, nor by spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It is through the spirit of God that he works through us to get things accomplished to our full capacity 
or full potential. So, yes, God can do things without us. But it's the power of God that works through us that helps us realize our full potential. Everybody with me so far? All right, so God gives the ability. He gives the inspiration, the strength, and the endurance. He gives the inspiration, the strength, and the endurance. It's not by chance that you had a dream about what you dreamt about. It's not by chance that you are where you are right now. Okay, God gives the inspiration, the strength, and the endurance. All right, he opens the doors. He supplies the manpower, the money, and the other resources to go through those doors. He supplies favor so that the doors can be opened when all we merely do is walk through them. So I know some of us might say, well, look, I'm fine where I am. I, I'm I, I'm I'm good where I am. I'm, I'm happy with what I have. That that's cool. But but is that your true nature? And so tonight I want to talk to some people who are the word I want to use is hungry. I, I want to talk to the hungry people, the people that want more than what they have and, and want more than where they are now. I want to talk to the dreamers who who wake up in the middle of the night with ideas in their heads that they don't know where they came from or I want to talk to the visionaries who can see an event or an idea before it happens I want to talk to those men that are planners who can plan an event from top to bottom with success I want to talk to the future business owners who are successful in their craft that will guide others to the same accomplishment I want to talk to the hungry individuals that that are hungry not just for those natural things but for more of God, because they understand that it is through the spirit of God working through them that they can reach, achieve, or attain their full potential. So are you hungry enough? Or are you really hungry? And we hear that all the time in the church. Are you hungry and thirsty for more? And so back to the word potential. Now, there's something called potential energy. Anybody know what potential energy is? Somebody chime in and tell me what potential energy is. Is that the energy that, that is more potential energy? The energy is what? Say it again, Brother Morris. I think that's the energy that's for. You said forced or stored? Forced. Okay. All right, the energy is worth. Anybody else for potential energy? What is potential energy? He on the right path. Amount of energy that could be used for something that's not that's being used right. yet. All right. So potential energy. Potential energy has the ability to cause a force, and it's the amount of energy that could be used for something. Okay. So if we look at this potential, potential lesson, let's, let's take a physics lesson for a second. I know we're not in, man, I'm in grade school anymore. Some of us might be in college. I, I didn't like physics either. But let's go through this quick physics lesson. An object can store energy as the result of its position, okay? This is potential energy. An object can store energy as a result of its position. For example, the heavy ball of a demolition machine is storing energy when it's held at an elevated position. Check me out, it's held at an elevated position, okay? It's stored when it's at an elevated position. This stored energy of the position is referred as the potential energy, all right? The same way with the bow and arrow. A bow and arrow, when you draw the arrow back, all right? That's the potential energy that it has, okay? But yet when its position is altered, okay, the bow is able to store the energy by the virtue of the position that it's in. Think about it. A wrecking ball that's hanging straight down has no stored energy, okay? A bow and arrow, the bow part that has not been pulled back has no potential potential energy 
okay? The stored energy of position is referred to as potential energy. Potential energy is the stored energy of position possessed by an object, all right? Which brings me to my first point tonight in this why not me locker room. The first question is, are you in position? If you want to unlock your true potential and you want to be all that you are set out to be and that God has placed in you, the first question is, are you in position? Because we know what potential energy is and we know it's the energy of what could be. We know what we have on the inside of us of what we could do and what we could accomplish, but our potential is relative to our position. So you have to be positional or in the right position to utilize that store of potential. Remember, a wrecking ball that's hanging straight down is not gonna wreck anything, all right? But when it's placed in the right position and it begins to swing on that pendulum straight down and it hits that wall, it's going to break, okay? And the better position that it's in, the more damage it causes, the more energy it has, the more potential energy is used. So potential energy is relative to its position. You have to be positional. So I ask you, are you in position? And so allow me to use two examples since I know this is our men's locker room. Allow me to use two examples. Tom Brady, which I, I, I talk football. He's a good fo football player. I won't cheer for him. He's a good football player. Seven times Super Bowl champ. In 2001, Tom Brady took over for the injured Drew Bledsoe and became the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. Drew Bledsoe would not get his starting job back. Instead, Brady walked on the field and led the New England Patriots to the NFL playoffs. Fast forward, 2004, Ben Roethlisberger took over for an injured Tommy Maddox and never looked back. He became a two-time Super Bowl champion. So why are we talking about football? Because had Brady and Big Ben not been in a position to take over for Bledsoe and Maddox, then they would have fizzled out or tanked. But they both went to the practices. They both knew the playbooks. They both kept themselves in shape. They ate right. They made the connections with their teammates. But most of all, all of those things had to help to build the potential energy. Remember, the word position goes beyond a title. And I'll say that again, because even though I'm an administrator, I'm a teacher first, and we always say things to make sure we, the students understand it, that the word position does not mean a title, okay? So you may say, well, yeah, he, he was next in line, but, but it was more than a title position, okay? Because have you ever seen someone that was next in line for a position and they should not be and they perform horribly? Have you ever seen somebody on the job who was next in line for the supervisor role and they became supervisor and everything just tanked? Yeah, they were next in line because of position, because of that title but they didn't put themselves in the right position to be able to take over in an effective manner. Can you become what you need to be and be effective in it? Anybody can have a title. I saw an ad on, online the other day with $50 to get you a certificate to be a bishop. Anybody can have a title. Okay, but it, have you placed yourself in a position to be effective in whatever role it needs to be in. So that first point is, are you in position? Because those young men, Big Ben and, and, and Tom Brady, they positioned themselves not because of the title, but because they understood, why not me? And if it's going to be me, then I better be ready. I better train like I'm the starter. I better pass the ball like I'm the starter. I better practice like I'm the starter. I better do everything like this is my team so when that time comes, I have to be in position so that when my name is called, when my number is pulled, when I am needed, I can do what I have been purposed to do. So the potential is there. The question for you tonight is, are you in 
position, not by title, but have you done everything you need to do to put yourself to be ready when your name is called? My next point I want to give you is that you were given everything you needed from birth. If you're taking notes, write that down. You were given everything you needed from birth. There are four scriptures to support this. That you've been given everything you needed to unlock your true potential. The first one, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I can summarize that by saying God already knows. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, For the gifts of calling of God are without repentance. Romans 12 and 6 says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us. The scripture goes on to say, if you're prophesying, prophesy, you call for ministry, minister. 2 Peter 1 and 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Out of those four scriptures, everything you need to unlock your full potential has been given to you. He's given to us the things that pertain to life and godliness. He's given us gifts according to the grace that's given to us. He's given us gifts and calling without repentance. And he's already prepared our future to give us an expected end for those that are in Christ. Everything has been given, but are you in the right position to use it? Everything has been given, but are you in the right position to use it? That's food for thought right there. If I can say it another way, I'll say it like this. Don't get caught dreaming someone else's dream. I'll say that again. Don't get caught dreaming someone else's dream. Many times we strive to be what somebody else wants us to be instead of seeking out and finding out our true purpose and walking down that path we walk the path of what somebody else has said we should do, or we're striving to do what we, what we feel like would make them proud or what we feel like they're going to be happy with when that's not really what we want to do. Because we know that we should be doing something different. I.e., that's that potential. That's that potential call on the inside you telling you that's not really the route you're supposed to be going. You're going this route, but that's not really the way you're supposed to be going. So don't get caught dreaming someone else's dream. The path that somebody else set out for you may not be the path that you're supposed to be on. And that's why that potential keeps, keeps telling you and you feel like every route that I go is not where I'm supposed to be. I still feel like there is more. There, there's something else I need to go to. There's something else I need to grab. There's something else I need to do. There's more that's required of me. And my potential is saying there's more required of me. But I keep going down this path that's been drawn out for somebody else or because somebody else wants me to go on this path. I'm dreaming someone else's dream. Money doesn't mean you have unlocked your full potential. Neither does fame. And neither does the materialistic things that we that we have on, on earth. That does not mean we've unlocked our full potential. Now, man would have you to believe that, yeah, when you got all the money, and, and this this means like a room when you got all the money, when you got all the girls, when you got all that, you you have arrived, you have reached your full potential. That's it. That's all it, that's all you have to worry about. As long as I got some money, a little, little fame, people know my name. Uh, as long as I got a nice clean car, maybe two or three clean cars, a big old house, I have reached my full potential. Okay? Your full potential is way more than just those materialistic things. You are only operating at full capacity when your relationship with Christ is so solid that you can identify that the blessings came from God and only God. 
You are only operating at full capacity when your relationship with Christ is so solid that you can identify that the blessings came from God and only God. I would not want man to bless me unless it came from God through man because man can take it away and they'll turn it into something negative and say, well, shoot, they gave me that. Well, you owe me, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm going to go and bless you with this $200, but you know, you're going to owe me later on. But when it's from God, man can't touch it. And he leaves no doubt in the mind of the believer that he's the one that blessed him. So only when you have achieved those things through Christ, when you achieve all, all that you're seeking after, can be found in the living of the word. Not just reading and not just hearing, but doing. We know the scripture that says, and be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Okay? Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This seems kind of befitting that we go this route right now because, but seek ye first. But seek ye first. A lot of people get this twisted when they say, okay, well, look, if I want these things, yes, T-H-A-N-G-S, if I want these things and I need to go ahead and seek the Lord, they're seeking them for, for, the, for the wrong kind of game. But if you seek his purpose for your life first, that's when you unlock your true potential. Why not me? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Because I haven't unlocked my true potential. But if I unlock my true potential by seeking the purpose, by seeking the reason why this potential is inside of me, by asking God to guide me in the direction I should go, if I seek him first, then I will unlock my true potential. Then the question of why not me can be answered with a firm statement that says, it will be me, it shall be me, it is me. So sometimes you will not know your purpose or talent until a struggle happens, okay? You will not know your purpose or your talent until a struggle happens. There is work that must be done. So while you're there ready and, and waiting to be catapulted into the next level of your life, you have to do the work while you're there. All right, keep that in mind. That's my next point. Work has to be done. For this point, I'll call upon the parable of the talents, which is should be very familiar. If not, we're going to kind of review it really quickly. It's found in Matthew 25. And in summary, you have a master who gave three of his servants five talents, gave one of them two talents, and gave one of them one talent based on what they could handle. Catch that really quickly. He gave it to them based on what they could handle. Flip that and apply that to you. Everybody's talent is not going to be the same. Everybody's not called to do the same job or do the same thing. Everybody doesn't have the same talent to, to in the same position as somebody else. But he gave them according to what they could handle. The servants were given five, and the servant that was given two, they doubled their talent. And they were rewarded by the master. The servant that was given one talent didn't do anything with it. And as a result, his one talent was taken away and given to the servant that started with the five. So what are you saying? Again, everybody's talent is not going to be the same. They were given the talents based on what they could handle. But the one that was given a five and the one that was given the two put in work. And they put themselves in position to when the master returned, they were rewarded. Think about it. It's all coming back full circle now. You got to be put in position. You got to be in position. You got to put in the work. They put in the work. 
place himself in a position to be rewarded. Meanwhile, the one that had the talent, that it, the talent didn't necessarily go to waste. It laid dormant. It was not used. Okay? There should be a return on investment. Okay? So, I want to give you seven lessons and I was on the internet and I was perusing the internet. Seven life lessons from the parable of the talents. It's seven life lessons. I'm just going to give you the, the topics of those seven life lessons. The first one says we are given based on our ability. All right. Our talents and our potential that we have, God has given it to us based on our ability. We have to be careful not to try to do more than what we are able to do. Or again, trying to dream someone else's dream because the way they're going about doing it might not be the way you're supposed to go about doing it. The next one, faithfulness over little is required for more. Faithfulness over little is required for more. The next one, the more you receive, the more that is required. The next one, do what you can with what you have. The next one, I like this one. This one that we got to keep in mind. Fear keeps us from success. You ought to be in your house right now, point to yourself, say, don't be scared. Fear keeps us from success. Don't be scared. Don't fear. The next one says, what you don't use, you will lose. And the last one says, faith without works is dead. There should be a return on investment, but remember, it's without repentance. People use their talents for all sorts of things. For example, you have fortune tellers, you have prophets, okay? Okay. But how great would it be to use your talents or live out your purpose or unlock your potential for the one who gave it to you in the first place? So I want to point out something here. When you have something unprofitable, okay, unprofitable, we call it useless. In verse 30 of that same chapter, it says, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The one that was unprofitable, that had the talent but did not use it, that had the potential but never tapped into it, was unprofitable, was useless. And so I don't think anyone that would want to be called useless or unprofitable in this society, that's like cursing me out or slap me in the face as a man. Unprofitable is a strong word, but it was necessary for that time. And so we don't want to be unprofitable by not tapping in and unlocking our true potential. But the only way we can do it is seeking out God and finding that purpose that he's placed in our life. Again, don't ignore the dreams. Don't ignore the visions. Don't ignore the things that we know are pulling and tugging at us. And so I hope by now that you that you see that this is a biased message. This is a biased locker room session right now. That, that which I firmly believe you cannot unlock your true potential without God. Without that true relationship with Christ, your true purpose cannot be achieved. And what you think you're operating in, in the absence of him, is a false sense of purpose. I'll say it again. Without that true relationship with Christ. Your true purpose cannot be achieved. And what you think you're operating in, in the absence of God, is a false sense of purpose. Recognize that there is greatness inside of you and recognize that there is potential that has not yet been discovered in each of us. As long as you are here breathing, you have the opportunity to live on purpose. And I know our time is far spent and I'm getting ready to kind of wrap this all back around, but I want to give you a few steps in helping you with unlocking and on your journey. Now, these steps are not the end all be all. And I, I'm sure that there are scholars who have written 
plenty of manuals and plenty of purpose books and how to how to tap into myself with self-help guides and things like that. And so the, there are other books out there. Your, your pastor is an avid reader. So I'm sure he can guide you in the right direction of some books that can help you along the way. But these are a few steps and very simple that come from my personal experience and in helping me to unlock. And I know I've not unlocked my true potential. I'm not going where I'm supposed to go completely. Okay. I know that because there's always something tugging in me. But the first step is to simply read the word of God. But the first step and the sixth step go together because after you read the word of God, you have to seek understanding from God and from someone you trust to help you interpret what it means and how to apply it to your life. When you find that person that helps you apply it to your life and can help you interpret what it means, don't lose that person, i.e. your pastor, or i.e. somebody who's guiding you. Number three, connect yourself to the right people. Eliminate the negativity. People will have you abandon your dreams. People will talk you out of your vision. People will try to steal what God has placed inside of you. So connect yourself with the right people. Eliminate the negativity. And number four, know God's immediate will for your life. I'll help you with this one, number four. An immediate commandment to follow is in Matthew 22. To, for you to be able to know God's immediate will for your life. Matthew 22 and 37 says, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So what are you saying? And number four, if you don't know your purpose, and you're seeking out your purpose, you can start positioning yourself for God to speak to you into that purpose. Position yourself <clears throat> by knowing his immediate will for your life. His immediate will is that you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then love thy neighbor as thyself. You start there. And when you start there wholeheartedly, things will begin to open up and things will begin to blossom and things will, you'll begin to get, get talked to and spoken to and you'll start to realizing that, okay, I'm starting here, but now God is taking me there. The fifth thing is seek him first. And we like to have that part of scripture says all these things and these things can be anything you can think of. It can be jobs, it can be careers, it can be businesses. It can be just enough money in your bank account. It can be always having some food. It can be having good connections and good friends and no negativity and anything that we don't think of. God's power is infinite through us. <clears throat> with him all things are possible and remember God said he should supply all of our needs and then he'll bless us beyond the needs that we have so in unlocking your true potential it's a journey it's a journey that, that, you, that you must travel if you really want to know it and you really want to live out your life how God intended it's a journey <clears throat> you have to travel on that journey one of the most important things is connect with the right people connect with the right people i don't like taking trips by myself i like to take other people with me so if i'm going on this journey i got to take somebody with me who's seeking and looking for the same thing to live out the true potential to unlock the true potential why not me there are so many things that you can be doing that you can achieve that you can do there's no, there shouldn't even be a question of why not me now. It should be that it will be me and it shall be me. Because I got a guide now and, I, and I'm going to follow and I'm going to unlock the potential that's inside of me. There's so much stored in that when it does happen and I burst on the scene or it does happen and I'm, I'm next in line, I'll be in position for whatever God has for me. I hope you enjoyed this tonight. I'm going to turn it back over to your pastor if he's here.
right here. Yes, sir. Man, that was fantastic. Um, but before I have my closing comments, we want to open up the floor for questions or even comments. Uh, we are, do appreciate our speaker just definitely taking out the time to talk with us. And I would definitely like for a few people to kind of tell us what their takeaway was, um, what part of the message may have inspired you, or if you if you had any questions. And again, this would just kind of be um, an indication or even encouragement for, for our speaker. Um, so before I say anything and have closed remarks and give my input, the floor is open for any questions or even the comments from um, tonight's lesson, which I think is that I know is a very, very powerful message. Any questions, any comments? I was just going to say, um, <laughs> he did a one, actually when he was talking, I was thinking about the talents uh, in the Bible in uh, Matthew 25 and 15. That actually came to me. We were talking about. I'm sorry, when you you were talking about um, the talents, you were talking about uh, what we could be in the potential, but it requires action. Um, what also came to me was a lot of times it's just me talking. Being in position means staying still, being quiet. Um, it a lot of times it requires. You were talking about. Um, someone being in position or the next in line to be the supervisor. Um, but when they become a the supervisor, they're not necessarily the best supervisor or they're not ready for it and you're looking for another one. Well, they were, a lot of people chase positions like you were talking about on their jobs and, and other things. But a lot of times I'll just say this from experience. A lot of times it's not God is just trying to get us to sit still and to not be so busy you know, moving around, doing this, doing that, but to stay still, to be in position. So when he's ready to give you what he's uh, wants you to have, you're in position that way too. So I just wanted to say that part. Well, that's very good. Good. Thank you, Brother James Jordan. Anyone else? We do have a few more minutes. Anyone else would like to kind of expound on what Brother Sims kind of talked about, about unlocking your potential, or if you had any questions as well? I just wanted to say this really helped me today because, man, I ain't going to lie. Recently, I have, I've been, I ain't been really having faith like I really need to, you know, and this is kind of confirmation for me to just, you know, stay in what I'm doing. Awesome. Thank you, Brother Jaquan. Powerful, powerful feedback. Anyone else, any other questions or comments as it relates to unlocking your potential? I just like to thank Elder Sims for speaking for us today. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, super appreciate the uh, the topic and everything was right on point um, for me and things that I've been thinking about and things I'm fearful of and leaving, uh, you know, and burying a talent and, you know, and not utilizing the gifts that have been given to me, um, you know, and serving uh, with those gifts. So it's certainly something that's been on my mind and something I've been contemplating for a little while now. And, um, and I just appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate the delivery and everything again was just right on point. So just thank you for this, uh, for the message and, uh, and for stepping up for the, you know, for the group today. Thank you, Brother Jason. All right. Anyone else? Any questions or any other comments about the subject and even our speaker tonight? So I will say, uh, again, if you don't mind, let's just, just give our speaker a round of applause. It was a phenomenal job. And that's the kind of information that I thank God for. He used practical information he used the scriptures to empower us to unlock the potential that god has given us and so i'm not going to repeat the lesson he did a phenomenal job and these were some major nuggets i don't care what age you are 
and what part of your, your life journey you are. This is a very powerful message that is designed to connect with us and to inspire us to be open, full of faith and not fearful to be everything that God wants us to be. Something that Brother Josh said that really stuck with me was the fact that he had mentioned that we pretty much have everything we need. God has already given us everything we need to be successful. We have everything. He, we were born with everything we need for him to use us to be successful. And so again, brother, we appreciate you. We thank you. Um, I would like for you to um, close us out in prayer. Um, and matter of fact, then we can do an altar call. You know, altar call is always in session. So you can do the altar call and even the, the benediction. Uh, we back in your hands, Brother Josh. Thank you. Again, I, I appreciate uh, all of the feedback. I appreciate your leader and asking me to come and speak. And I'm just just as humble as I can and just just do whatever that God has set for me to do. And so I, I, I uh, like I said, I kind of honor and a privilege to be able to speak and to be able to share some things from my experience and, and give you what God has given uh, to me. Uh, for anybody who is here and just you know he, he did say the, the altar call just anybody who you know I know the young man said that he hadn't had his faith and, and just been maybe kind of struggling with some things and all that but this is there's no really no no set time to to come to the altar but we can make our altar where we are and in that altar and that altar experience that I'm speaking of now is that just you know we we place our mind on the altar I think tonight that would be a good start to say, God, you know, keep our minds. And, and so in that, we know that in the society, in the world that we live in now, there's things that, that can come and plague our mind. And that's where it starts. It does not start, you know, physically, does not start in our hands or our feet. It starts in our mind. And so I think that will be the, the altar experience tonight and before we have the benediction. But if everyone on here would just bow your heads and, 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 close your eyes and begin to just focus on what it is that that you you need from God. And so when I say that, think of what it is that 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 you need God to do for you specifically. And it starts in the mind. And God, tonight, as the men that are on this call, God, or at their altar, wherever they are, God, we know that it starts in our mind that we believe you, God. We love you. We trust you, God. And God, we pray now for the mind of every individual that is on this call tonight, God. We pray now for every man that is on the call that is at their altar now, God. God, we're laying down everything that we have to you, God. We're starting with our mind. We take our mind and everything else comes with it, God. We start with our mind, God, and we lay it out to you, God. We say, use it however you want to use it, God. We say, clear it and clean it out, God, from every negative thought, God, from every evil demonic spirit, God, from everything that is there that is playing our minds, that's keeping us back, and that's holding us back, God. We lay it on the altar, God. God, if we lay our minds on the altar, God, we know that our heart goes with it, God. We know that everything goes with it, God. We know that our belief and our faith in you is going to start there, God. We thank you now for the chance and the opportunity to be able to lay everything on the altar unto you, God. Cleanse our hearts, God. Cleanse our souls and our spirit, God. Make us new tonight, God. Let us leave refreshed and renewed, God, with a new mind. God, creating us a clean heart, God, and renew our spirits. God, give us a new joy. Give us a new peace, God. Give us a new love, God. Help us to live out in our true potential, God. Now, as we get ready to leave this call, God, we thank you now again for the chance and this time that we have to fellowship as brothers, God, and be able to hear your words and to be able to have the practical application for our lives, God. We know this is a journey. We know this journey is not going to be easy. It will be tough. But God, we can do all things through Christ with strength and goods, God. And we thank you now for your son, Jesus, who died for our sins, who came to save the lost, God. We thank you now for the opportunity to seek out salvation, God. We thank you now for the chance to live out the life that you have set for us in this world. 
And we thank you in advance for the testimonies that are going to come our way, that we're going to hear of your miraculous work and power and how you've saved us, God, and how you've kept us and how you've blessed us in this world. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Josh, thank you. All my brothers, um, we thank you all for tuning in and God bless you all. We pray for you and you are dismissed. You all have a blessed, blessed evening.